today I want to give out a little bit more information about the range and carry holsters from IC Training Company. Uh, people have seen over the last uh, year, year and a half or so that I've gotten into a little bit of product development and we put in uh, endorsing products uh, for a long time, products that we believed in, crossbreed holsters, uh, the gun vault, quick access safes, Winchester, PDX-1 ammunition. And uh, I've been hesitant to put my own brand on different products simply because uh, there's a lot of great products out there and there's a lot of great companies doing a lot of great work. And the only reason I'd want to come up with a product that was my own is really to solve a problem uh, for myself or more importantly for the students that I see on the range. And the range and carry line of products absolutely is designed to do that. And I want to tell you a little bit how it started. A little over a year ago, I was approached by uh, Bruce, the owner of uh, PSYOP Tactical, about uh, teaming up on a holster design um, and or maybe just endorsing his holsters that uh, he was producing at the time in Florida. And this is uh, an example of one of the holsters that I was originally sent. In fact, I think these two were the, the original ones. This may have been the first one that I got for a Glock. This one's for an M&P. And uh, Bruce's idea was uh, to keep the gun high on the body close to the body and very protected. And as you can see, if I take this full-size Glock and insert it into this holster, it's, it's very well protected, it's very secure, um, the holster is very high on the gun, um, it's equal on both sides of the gun, the inside and the outside, so there's a high amount of sweat guard here, of course he's down in Florida, and it's completely enclosed in the bottom, relatively large holster, but it holds the gun very close to the body. So it's a well-designed holster uh, for someone who's looking for, for something for a large gun um, inside, outside the waistband. But it's, it's certainly not the way that I carry, and uh, I wanted to see it with some students. So we took this one out, we took uh, a couple other ones out, this M&P. Uh, as we started doing the test and evaluation, in fact, this one you may have seen in some of the Personal Defense Network uh, tour updates last spring. This one was out there. We put a little logo sticker on it. It's been beat up a little bit. Now what I've seen, uh, not just with this holster, but even going all the way back to leather holsters, is that this type of opening presents a problem on the training range. It's great for carry. So when you talk about a carry gun, and you have a gun that's very securely held up against the body, and it's protected from the elements and from being bumped and being dislodged, full cover, closed bottom, everything's great. And when you need the gun, of course, you can pop it right out. You can use it in your defensive situation. And then when it comes time to reholster, that generally is not an emergency situation. It's not something that we're worried about being super efficient or fast at, and it's going to happen once. So we're going to get the gun back in the holster and we're good. But in the training environment, this type of holster can present problems. Because the gun is being held close to the body and it's being held very high, what will happen, especially if it's behind the 3 o'clock position, back at the 4 or 5 o'clock position, which is where most of my students carry and certainly where most of my students train from, what happens is we see some fishing. We start to see people, and you may have seen this if you've been out at the range, see them tilt the gun inward just to get it started and find that holster and then drop it down into the holster. And that habit, of course, means that while they're doing that, they're pointing the gun inward at their body and then snapping the gun down into the holster. And what we want is for the gun to come straight back in and go straight down in the holster without covering the body when it doesn't need to. So one of the first things we talked about was coming down on the outside of the holster, making sure that these two panels were of different heights so that the inside is a little higher and it would be less likely that people would have to fish into this opening. The other thing we talked about was the open bottom. I personally like an open bottom holster, especially for like the Glock family of firearms or if someone has both a compact and a full size M&P, different size slide lengths with the XD series, the three series of guns that we primarily recommend for personal defense. Having that much holster for a very small gun obviously is a lot of overkill. So when it comes to actually carrying the gun, if we look at one of these holsters and we talk about carrying a full size gun, well then, that's fine and that's appropriate. And you want this much coverage on the gun and you need this much holster. Maybe not quite this much, but close. When we talk about then switching to a subcompact gun, the Glock 26, well very clearly we have a lot more holster here than we need. And that's something that I just see as inefficient and it's going to make you less likely to use this. So this might be a great range holster in this case for the small gun, but it's not going to be a great carry holster for the small gun. And again, we're trying to accommodate both sides of that equation, the range and carry line. Now the range and carry line was actually launched first with this belt. This belt was made available earlier this year. Um, again, it went through an extensive process of test and evaluation. Uh, we used it for several months with students and I wore uh, this particular one for several months myself and still am wearing this one. And what we found was that this belt um, is very sturdy vertically. It holds gear very well. It actually is 
thick enough to engage the different types of uh, gear that you're going to carry, whether it's a flashlight holder or the holster, obviously, spare magazine carrier. And the nice thing about it is it's very efficient in regard to this G-hook, you know, we call it the claw belt. Um, that, that claw hook that comes in here doesn't have to be taken on and off. It's very close to the body, so it doesn't protrude quite a bit under a t-shirt, under any kind of untucked shirt. Of course, I carry appendix generally, so I like to have as little as possible up here in the front of the belt. That way the gun isn't pushing out a belt buckle and even further and more uh, printing is gonna happen when you have that situation. And of course, I, I, despite how cool they are and, and as much as um, sort of they look great in pictures and everything else, having a giant buckle out here that you have to unthread every time you wanna take the belt off or on or put some Thing on the belt um, that can get tedious. So I think this is a, a very efficient belt and uh, we've got in a couple different colors and we've gotten great feedback on this first product from the range and carry line. The holster is the second product in the range and carry line and I'm excited about it too. This one's a little beat up. You can see this one's got uh, chewed up on the edges, been through a couple of advanced pistol handling classes with some of the one-handed manipulations we do right off of this edge and it's this edge that is a big design feature of the range and carry holsters. As you can see, that edge is rolled outward, and what that allows is for people to very conveniently and efficiently find the opening of the holster. Now, right away, you're gonna say, well, if someone's carrying a gun and someone's at a training class, they shouldn't really have trouble finding their holster. That should be something that goes away in the first couple of minutes. And generally, it is something that goes away in regard to having to look down and feel around and really find the holster. But for efficient training, 100 or more reps a day, hundreds of reps a day in some classes of coming in and out of the holster, this is just a little convenience factor that makes reholstering a lot more efficient and honestly safer. There's going to be much less need for fishing around. It's much less likely for people to kind of get tired towards the end of the day and get lazy and sloppy about that reholstering because they aren't going to be fighting any of these sharp, narrow edges. It's very easy to just, just almost drop this gun into because they aren't going to be fighting a situation where they're trying to get into a narrow opening. And what's going to happen is essentially this will just drop right in. Regardless of if they miss a little bit to the front, it brings it in. They miss a little bit to the outside, it brings it in. They miss a little bit to the inside, they're going to feel this sweat guard that's higher than the outside of the holster and it's going to drop it right in. So that makes it much more efficient. Now the other thing about the range and carry line is that we went with one size holster with an open body. I'm not a big fan of the closed bottom holsters. I think it's a bit of overkill when it comes to concealed carry. And as you can see, this was one of the early prototypes that I sent back to Bruce and said, well, here's where we would cut a bout for you know, a 17 size gun, a 19 size gun, a 26 size gun in the Glock family. And here's where I'd like to start thinking about cutting the top of the outside of the panel where we still cover the entire trigger guard, but we make sure that we don't have to worry about having two equally sized panels creating that narrow opening. And even with the rolled edge, it's nicer to drop this down. We also talked about relieving some of this area in here a little bit more so that we definitely didn't have any uh, unwanted ejection of the magazine when we went back into the holster, especially with the extended magazines that a lot of people have on their carry guns and that I recommend for a lot of people. So what we ended up with is a holster that, as you can see, does have a little bit of protrusion. Now, when we go back to the subcompact gun, that's completely covered. This is the, the much more likely size of a carry gun for many people, and that gun is completely covered. If we go to a 19, or the mid-size gun in the Glock family, you're going to see that it will protrude just a little bit. And if we go to the full-size gun, the 17 or the 22, there's about an inch of extension that comes out past the holster. Now what you'll hear is a lot of people say, oh, well, now you risk having the gun knocked out of the holster. And while technically that is true, if we look at it realistically, I can take this gun in the holster and drop it and see that the gun clearly doesn't pop out. I can hold it up a little bit higher, make sure it's in there all the way. Again, it still hasn't moved. Hold it up a little bit higher, same thing. No way to push it back down. Hold it up here. Now, nope, still didn't move. So impact is going to have to be pretty substantial to move that gun. Even if I were to have that kind of an impact, let's say that my full body weight were coming down, I were sitting down onto a chair with an arm, I was sitting down in this stool and I brushed up against this somehow as I came down into the chair. If I were to push this completely flush and all the way flush down here, so that it is flush with the holster, completely put down against the armrest in the car or the edge of the couch, whatever it may be, if I then turn this, what you're going to see is that it is still completely held by this holster. So even if it were pushed up and flush, uh, clearly the trigger is still completely covered and everything else. Um, we really don't have to worry about that too much. It would take an awful lot of energy to smack up against this hard enough 
to really knock it out even that much. And that's not enough to let it come loose. So at this point, I'm not worried about the open bottom holster getting in the way of anything and it gives us a much smaller package when we're carrying the smaller gun. So it lets us take the full size gun to the range and train or we can even carry the full size gun obviously in exactly the same thing. So. Some of the things we talked about were the belt loops. Um, these belt loops have gone through a lot of testing. These obviously are Kydex made uh, and attached there in the factory at PSYOP Tactical. And uh, they've been great for us. So they, they uh, fit a variety of different types of belts and uh, they've been very durable. They've held up through all the advanced pistol ending classes and things like that. Um, any holster is going to be a combination of uh, cost concealability, comfort, and uh, aesthetic appeal. So uh, if you're looking for a, a range holster that also works when you carry, or a carry holster that also works at the range very efficiently and conveniently, um, I obviously would strongly encourage you to check out the uh, PSYOP Tactical ICE Training Team-Up RAC Range and Carry Holster.